Yeah, please be joined this time by Coach Tony Lottie, the new head coach at Seconder. Coach, thanks for joining me. Oh, my pleasure. It's great to see you again. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Coach, uh, a, a new a new era for you. What, what drew you to the Seconder job? Uh, it's hard to explain, to be honest with you. It was kind of – I just felt like God was calling me to – to make a difference somewhere else. And uh, it's kind of the thing that led me from, to be honest with you, the South side to take the West Hall job, stepping out. And then, you know, I wasn't looking to leave West Hall and they didn't want me to leave when, when Appalachia, but I felt like God was moving me and kind of had the feeling again, after everything kind of been through personally and whatnot this past year, I felt like he was moving me. So, and and that's how it played out. Well, coach, it is Gwinnett County. It's brand new, the second year of existence. And most people know that means it's some big expectations, but some big opportunities. What are some of the the opportunities that second year presents? What's some of the things you see that can happen there? Well, for, for me, to be honest with you, it's a combination of a couple of things. You know, I've done two new schools before. I was mm-hmm. part of opening Union Grove in 2000 and then Woodland in 2007. And and I've done two rebuilds at um, West Hall and kind of what we've turned around there at Appalachia. And so it's kind of the first time that I've rebuilt a new school. So mm-hmm. it's kind of given me a, another whole perspective on things. So, you know, the facility is beautiful. Um, it's the only AI cluster in the country, from what I'm told. So the high school is a whole AI type thing. Now, I'm not going to sit here and pretend, Chris, to be able to tell you all that means. <laughs> um, I can tell you there's a jumbotron in the cafeteria or commons area. And, you know, the way everything's set up with kiosks and, and the way the technology works from mechatronics to, you know, it's funny. I sat in a mechatronics classroom the other day and, uh, boy, that's not good for your ego. At least it wasn't for mine. <laughs> Coach, we've done about 400 of these podcasts and I don't think that mechatronics has ever made it onto the podcast. So <laughs> congrats. <laughs> congratulations <laughs> well thank you i was gonna say i'm not gonna lie i left out of there thinking oh good lord thank god i'm not in high school anymore <laughs> yeah man oh uh, that's fantastic coach um so you're coming in new they're gonna play non tell me a little bit about the schedule or what you guys be doing this year and next year it's non-regional still it's still non-region because it's in the middle of the two-year classification right. uh reclass you know, they had, they kind of had picked up some games. It was kind of a little different how they did it. There was only seven games that they had last year. And then they played uh, a couple of JV games. So spent my time when I first got there trying to pick up some games, get a full schedule. So I was able to do that, get a 10 varsity game schedule and also a full seven game JV schedule. So uh, that way we can work to it. And then, you know, we'll see where, how everything falls in the next reclassification, but Right. I'll, we'll start it out this year, my this next season, my first year as a non-region, but playing a 10-game varsity schedule. Right. And there's some powerhouses on there. I mean, oh, yeah. they had picked up Peachtree Ridge and Shiloh and, you know, Matt and Tino obviously do a great job with their program. So, yeah. um, you know, so we'll take one step at a time. That's right. And I assume you'll be in that general area, maybe what we call 6A now. Is that probably right? You think moving – well, yeah, based on the numbers, because of how they did the transfer process, because um, as far as, you know, it's pulling from Mill Creek and Mountain View, but there were certain ones they didn't make transfer and whatnot. So we're sitting at, I believe the numbers I looked at are 1,600 right now. Uh, we're projected with the incoming freshman class that's coming, which would be, you know, a, a nice size class. We're predicted to be right at 2,000, 2,100. So really, it depends on where depends on where that break is, yeah. Where it is, we're doing away seven. Whether we end up in five or six, of course, you know, I, I've been in both. <laughs> I've been in around for a while, and there's it's not like well, I hope we're five A yeah. instead of six A or you well, know whatever because good football teams good football in both of those. All of it. Good football teams, especially right where you are. Yes. Um, so what is the is it opportunity or is it a threat that? some of the best teams in the state in 7A, including the defending state champs, are right down the street? Well, you know, I've never had the opportunity. I'm going to reach out to Coach Lovelady. You know, I've been around a while, and unfortunately for me, I've never had the opportunity to actually meet him. I think at the Falcons thing I was at a week or so ago, he was there. But the way everything was, I didn't get a chance to talk to him. But obviously what he's done at Mill Creek is, and, you know, everything says he's such a phenomenal guy. 
So, you know, yeah, when you're pulling from from there, it's one of those things that my focus has been literally since the day I hit the hit the job was at my feeder schools. So spent, I spent a lot of time at my elementary schools and Jones Middle School, which was the primary feeder for Mill Creek, is not feeding Mill Creek anymore. Or at least that's the number one goal. There's they're they're um they're 100 percent to seconder. So I've spent a lot of time with the principals at my feeder school and, you know, been I've been doing a thing with our mascot kind of road trip and with Coach Lottie and Java. So going to see the kids and, and to build in that that community for second year. Coach, that's an awesome idea. And, you know, I think Mill Creek is actually a a great model for what you're trying to build because I know they ended up doing the same thing. They were a brand new school, I mean, now many, many years ago, but then had to really kind of grow into that mold. And now people that are not – don't have the years on them that we got know Mill Creek as – the team, you know, our house. And so, um, yeah, they was a great place. Just so many good teams right around there. Coach, somebody's new to second year. They, they're not familiar with you. What are they going to see from your team? What, what, what do they, what can they expect to watch when they watch your team come out and compete this year? Well, hopefully it's kind of been what all my teams have done is that, you know, we're going to compete at a very high level. Um, they're not going to be any quit type deal. And we're going to play with class. You know, we're going to play hard, play with class. And, and while that sounds like a, I don't know, maybe a coach's cliche or whatever, I hope when people see my teams and, you know, I've never really been blessed with teams that have all this overloading talent, but we've managed to win some games that we shouldn't have won. Um, and I attribute that to, I feel like, how we compete. And so, you know, that's my my goal and dream is is two things that, you know, kids who who chose to play football in my program, number one, that they know that uh, they meant more to me as a person than they ever could, ever could have as a player. And then for my colleagues and guys, I've been so blessed. You know, the things that I went through this past year with my health issue, um, just, you know, all, and the, all the guys that I've become close with in this profession, you know, reaching out, praying for me and, and being that support system. And, you know, and what I've said all along throughout my whole career is, if you and I can't compete against each other on a Friday night and then have coffee or breakfast together on Saturday morning, then we're not doing this right. If it's just about 48 minutes. So um, hopefully that's what, you know, people and everybody, you know, from officials too. It means a lot to me when I get emails from officials on Monday that take the time to email and say, you know, coach, I appreciate your silo. I appreciate the class and I appreciate the respect you showed us. So um, yeah. that's what I think you're going to see out of this team. It's kind of been the MO all the way through for me. Coach, you've um you mentioned you alluded a few times to it, and it you you've had a a whirlwind of a year, my man. Uh, yes, sir. You know the the highest of highs in some cases where you've been some places. You went to the Super Bowl, man. I was excited yes. to follow that, and you've been you've been low. So, what perspective? I mean, I think you kind of gave it, but change your perspective a little bit, doesn't it? And well, what can you offer you, up to that? It's well, it's funny you use that word because. You know, John Gordon talks about the one word and and perspective was my one word. And so it's it, and he says, you know, be careful what words you pick, because it'll make sure that it comes to life for you. And, you know, when I got the word that I wasn't feeling good and they finally figured out. And when I actually read the results of the brain scan that said I had a brain tumor, um, you know, you go through emotions that I, I don't know how to explain it. And then. I was in the hospital for extended period of time, some complications after. And then I dealt with a complication that, you know, I was told could be game over kind of a deal. And so I just made my I, I felt like I had my peace with God anyway. But I just said, you know, hey, I'm ready to come if that's what this is going to happen. But I'd rather not right now. You know, if you can use me to do something else, uh, I really appreciate that. I want to stay. And so it did. And then, but what came out of it, if, if you saw the story, anything about, you know, I was able to come back to the field a little bit, but I had to protect my head and face. So I turned my helmet into a helmet of gratitude and, and all the people who, and that's one of the messages that, you know, I've always wanted kids and people I'm around to get is put into perspective, you know, first things first, but also about gratitude. And, you know, it's like, I'm very vocal about the fact that I had people who loved and cared for me who were not related to me. And if you get that, that is a blessing. And, and trying to let people see the difference between a calling and a job. And, and what we do, it's like, you know, here I'm standing up there at the, at the Falcons Awards show and I'm speaking to all the people that were in attendance there. And, you know, Rich McKay sitting right in front of me and, and you got all the state championship coaches. And 
one of the things that, and, and kids that were in there too, and, and that's one of the things that I tell them is you can tell who's got a calling and who's got a job by how they carry themselves, how they interact. And I'll tell you what, what we do, Chris, we both know it's way too hard to be a job. And if it's a job for you, people will know, and, and it's going to be hard for you to survive long-term, especially as a head coach. Coach, I commend you so much. I mean, just for your toughness and your example, but, but, but most people don't, most people that go through the things you're going, you went through don't have the platform you've had. Right. And you were able to use that platform to encourage those people probably more than you even know. And you know, that reach. And so I commend you for just, I can't imagine, I could never imagine going through that until you actually do. But I really was impressed with, you using what platform you have as a head football coach, because you do have a platform, even as a high school head football coach, that many, many other people don't have. And no, you're, you're 100% Not a question right. there, but I just commend you for that, Coach. Well, and that means a lot to me. Um, you know, it really does. And for me, you know, with the whole Falcons thing, and and it's funny because one of the things that uh, I was doing when I was got to be team captain and everything for the Tampa Bay game, you know, my wife came up to me afterwards and she said, hey, I don't know why, but you know, there was a couple of executives of the Falcons and they just said, make sure he knows this. And I said, what's that? And she said that you getting a brain tumor had nothing to do with you getting this award. This was kind of a culmination of a lot of different things over a lot of period of time. And because, you know, as a guy, you know, I didn't want, well, you know, for that to play into it, you know, as far as, um, but I, you're right. The platform that for mm -hmm. whatever reason, God gave me, um, and I think, especially nowadays, Chris, I think, you know, the gratitude thing gets lost. It just mm -hmm. does. You know, in two days, because today's Wednesday, and I just gave out equipment, and I'll take the field Friday for my first spring practice here. Well, one year ago, I had brain surgery on Friday. And, you know, laying there, you know, when walking off the field that time when I had to say goodbye to everybody, because uh, literally when they found the brain tumor about a week and a half later, I was on an operating table up in Chapel Hill. So here in two days, I'm going to walk out on the field, God willing, still got two days to get there. But just remembering that this time last year, I was in about a 12 hour brain surgery, not knowing what God let me keep doing what I, I feel like he's called me to do. And so it's going to be an emotional thing for me, just like it was when, I, you know, Appalachia, mm -hmm. real close to my admin there. And I, I always will be. I'm actually going back over there Monday night for their senior ceremony. I was asked to board some kids and. So that means a lot to me because, like I said, at the end of the day, and I'm very adamant, if this is only about a 48-minute football game, then we really have nothing. And my whole speech, too, was, you know, we've all heard that poem, The Dash, and, you know, we're going to be measured as coaches on wins and losses, but the significance really comes in that dash, and mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. So, you know, I had, I've had i got a couple of guys that play for me in high school that are on my staff at Seconder now. Um, you know, the new assistant head coach, defensive coordinator at Birmingham Southern came to see me today. I coached him way back in like 2005 at Union Grove. So I'll continue to take my value in my dash. Coach, you um, what a great testimony. And I mean it, man. There's people out there, you don't even know who they are. You've never met them. They just followed you on social media or something. They went through similar things you have. They didn't have the support. And you ever think coaching is coaching? Right now, coaching's got its moments, man. It's there's some there's some issues in the coaching world. Hundred percent. If you ever think there's not that there's not a lot of positive, you look at situations like yours and just the hundreds of people that immediately were like a family to you because you did the same kind of job they do, and um, that's really encouraging to see, and especially when you're able to have the testimony you have now going out there a year later and competing. Man, I I could talk about that for a long time, but I'm gonna make it about football now. Okay, that's fine. Brag on these guys. Brag on these guys that uh, are on your coaching staff. I want to hear about who stayed, who's new, whatever. Tell me all about it. Okay, so um, there's actually just a couple guys that they're being retained over there that are going to be with me for this season. Uh, one, he's been around a while, and you probably don't know the name when I throw it out there. He, you know, he's been at Archery as part of the state championship stuff at North Gwinnett, and that's Byron Shells, mm -hmm. um, who does defensive line. So. Uh, Coach Shells and I have hit it off from the, the moment this thing kind of started. So he's one. Um, another one is Coach Old No, who's, who's a great guy. He's also the head wrestling coach. So he's going to stay out there and, and work with me on some things. And then Keith Sims, who I'm really excited about. Uh, 
I think here in a few years, we're going to hear about him getting in the NFL Hall of Fame. So you're talking about a guy, multiple Pro Bowls. He's a, a Miami Dolphins legend at offensive line. So he's going to be working the offensive line. And then I'm bringing a couple guys with me um, from, from over there. David Seawright's coming over and um, Coach Adams, who I coached back in the day at Union Grove back in about the early 2000s. He's coming uh, back with me. And then Coach Shirley, who, uh, you know, the, the cool thing about Coach Shirley, and he probably probably like Coach, quit telling the story. So when I was at West Hall, because, you know, I'm big in the youth program, the middle school yeah. and whatnot, Cameron started with me as an eight, eight-year-old as my ball boy. Then he played in the junior Spartans, and he played in my middle school, played for me all four years at West Hall, and then he went on and played safety at Shorter. And so, you know, I've been able to give him his first job, so he'll be there with me. And then um, my new defensive coordinator, a lot of people go, no, I'm actually, I'm going to make that announcement on your show because nobody knows hey, who that is yet. Big so time. It's big time. And so I'm so excited about Coach Philip Hale. So mm-hmm. Coach Hale is coming as my de- as defense coordinator, um, brings a great deal of knowledge, obviously, from his years as not only a head coach at Dooley County and whatnot, but, you know, he is a successful defense coordinator during runs that North Gwinnett had. Um, as well as Colquitt. So yeah. um, he and I just become really good friends over the last, you know, little bit here and just kind of hit it off. And, you know, that's one of the things with the staff is about the why. And, mm-hmm. you know, when we sit down, I show them an old crinkled up postcard that has my why written on it that I keep on my desk. I have for years. And and I say, you know, if your why matches this why, then we can get through everything else that happens. And so God's just, you know, whenever I've taken over a program, I've never been anywhere where really, um, you know, blessed with a whole bunch of things, right? Um, but I, my prayer's always been, you know, God just surround me with the right guys that, that'll that help me do what you need us to do and win some football games and, and you know, but do it the right way. You know, Chris, at the end of the day, what I hope if my name ever comes up at GHSA, I hope Dr. Hines and them are just going to say, you know what, he did it the right way. No matter what, he always did it the right way and that my name never crosses their table uh, in, in anything that's not possible. Well, Coach, I can test. I don't know everything, and I'm not there every day, but your name comes up in a positive way every time I hear it. I can guarantee you that. Well, um, I appreciate it. Really a testament to um, your toughness and your courage that you're out there, and now we want to see the ending of that story being you building that great football program. Uh, and so I, I'm really excited to follow you, Coach. If I can help you in any way, Please let me know if I'm ever out that way. I'll come see you sometime. Please do, serious, because yeah. I'd love to show you around the facility. Yeah. The school is beautiful; it's four stories. Um, it's big. You know, eventually the, somewhere down the road. We're what's the be, word we're going to get to? Mega mechatronics. Mecha. See, I thought it was mega too, and boy, they it's apparently mecha. mecha yeah, mecha mechatronics. Okay. You know, and, and as soon as they had to set me straight on that, Chris, I was like, that's it. I don't. Hey. I don't need to be hanging out in this classroom long. I just need to pass through. I just want to see it. Yes. I don't need to I'm saying, it. hey, <laughs> check it uh, on the kids' grades. Uh, good to see you, Coach. Uh, really pulling for you, man. If I can help you anyway, let me know. Thanks. I really appreciate you having me on. It's always great to talk to you. Take care, Coach. All right. You too, Chris. See you.